I'm Dewan Johnson. Welcome to the Think Bigger Actors podcast, where I share with you different kinds of talks and coachings and conversations with actors and industry professionals on thinking bigger. I hope these conversations will help you on your path to success, because I believe success is an inside job that starts with your mindset and the thoughts you hold dominant in your mind. Change your thoughts and you change your world. Your path to thinking bigger begins now. Thank you so much for being here, Sierra. How are you? I'm doing good, you know. I mean, it's the new year. I feel very optimistic and hopeful. And so, yeah, you know. <laughs> yes, I love that. I have to say, so, you know, the last couple of seasons on the Think Bigger Actor podcast, I have been interviewing a lot of people who I've either met on Bosch or on set or on other places that I've worked with. And you're one of the people that I haven't worked with yet because that was my new goal is to like expand the reach of the podcast and get out there. So thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you for having me. And, you know, I, this this might be a precursor to us eventually working with each other one day. I mean, so. can we just put that out there? Can we manifest yeah. that? Let's manifest it. Let's put it out there. <laughs> So, Let's yeah. put it out there. I, I want to know, you know, a little bit more about you. So I'm going to, I'm going to try a couple of rapid, rapid fire questions okay. that never turn out to be rapid fire. So no, they never <laughs> but I, we're, we're going to give it a little go and see what happens here. But why did you become an actor? Why did I become an actor? Oh my gosh. Um, Nothing. You're like, Dewan, that's not rapid fire. That's not rapid fire. <laughs> well, it all started when I was just in the womb. and <laughs> I was causing a scene. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I got bit by the acting bug at a young age, as most of us, you know, have. And I mean, it just, there were so many reasons. I mean, I just, I was a very quiet and shy kid. And, you know, when I got introduced to performing in theater arts, I think it just lit something up inside of me. You know, prior to that, um, you know, when I was living in New Orleans, at 1208 Camp Street in the Third Ward off of Martin Luther King Boulevard. Uh, What's up, Third Ward? Th right? Third Ward. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, my, my, my Nana, I called her my Nana. She's my dad's mom, my uh, paternal grandmother. I called her Nana. Um, she, when I was around nine years old, she had been diagnosed with cancer. And mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, I just had this thing inside of me where I just wanted to perform for her yeah. and just like make her happy and stuff. And I think that that was a little bit of the acting bug, you know, yeah. for prior to that. Yeah, I did like a school play and I was a giraffe in it. And I was like, I want to be the grasshopper, <laughs> you know, so yeah. it's just all of those reasons I feel like it just kind of eventually led me to be like, OK, I, I want to be an actor. I enjoy this. So my why was just always to, you know, bring some light into the world and, mm. you know, and have fun and tell stories. So yeah. I love that. Did you have supportive people around you? Like when you were? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, I did. I, I think that, you know, my dad and my Nana and my aunt Carrie, you know, they like we lived in New Orleans. And so, you know, the Mardi Gras and brass bands and the painting and the murals and visual arts and even the culinary arts and stuff. I mean, I think it was so natural for people in New Orleans to just kind of be creatively expressive. And so when my dad and my aunts and my Nana saw that, they just were like, okay, like, let's put her in a magnet school. <laughs> like that know? tracks, that tracks. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, they were, they were supportive. And, you know, even eventually when I moved in with my mom, she was supportive too. So, you know, I, I just think that they didn't really, really know, you know, what it yeah. was. I mean, they still don't, you know, it's just like, oh, you know, she's, she's on TV. You know? Right, and right. My family is definitely more of a sports family. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was the only artsy person you know and they were just like all right cool you know yeah so. try being a guy and like being in theater and like my family sports too they just don't get it they're like so and i'm like <laughs> yeah no i mean literally like on my mom's side of the family she's related to walter payton and gary payton and so it's like it's just like okay you know cool go cool go, go, do you you do you ball. so it was like oh, yeah. oh she's not into basketball okay you know mm. so you know yeah Okay. Okay. All right. So what's your favorite role you've ever played? Favorite role I've ever played. Um, obviously, I mean, no, 
I have two, but I would say my very first acting job uh, was my favorite role. Mm. And that was the CIA agent Jessica in the Steven Seagal film. Yeah. Fury. It was my first role ever. And, you know, at that time, just there weren't a lot of female action roles mm -hmm. and there weren't really a lot of women of color, black women, female action roles. And that was my very, very, very first role. I was green as I don't know what. Mm -hmm. but, but what a way to start. What a way yeah, to start. Way to start. With, yeah. With and I mean, I just, I stepped in and, you know, did it and I had a blast. And so, yeah. Yeah. You said there was two. You said my first. Oh, if, <laughs> I'm yeah, listening over here. I'm listening hard. Rapid fire here, and I'm, <laughs> I'm like, this game so bad. You just gotta say the name. You just gotta know, say exactly. the name. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, the second one, Wendy Williams. And, okay. And, all right. Well, we're gonna get to that. Oh, we're gonna get to yeah. that. That is awesome. Okay. And just because I, you know, they call me the mindset guy, and I love manifesting and future focusing, I want to put it out there. Like, what's your dream role or mm -hmm. something you're dying to play? Uh, dream role, Egyptian queen, goddess, Nefertiti, Lena Horne, Pam Greer, all of that. Or yeah. just total, you know, badass of a woman. You know, if I could do like a female John Wick or something, that would be awesome. So awesome. So awesome. If you're watching this on YouTube, she didn't skip a beat. It was like right at the top <laughs> of her. It was like, it was like, boom, Egyptian, <laughs> like in yeah. it, ready to go. That's, that's how you manifest. You know, what's up, you know, what's up. <laughs> You know, um, I, you know, I, I want to ask, you know, we talk about this on this podcast, you know, about success leaves clues. And, you know, I, I got a couple of places I want to, I'm dying to ask you about like auditioning and, you know, self-taping in that world, you know, but, but I guess I want to, before I talk about Wendy Williams, how do you get into your characters? Is there like a way or do you just, is a process? What, what What's your process for getting into the characters? Um, I would say over the years, I've really been just learning how to perfect my not perfect my process but develop it if that yeah. makes sense because I do feel like especially early on in my career you know you're kind of like all right what's the lines where are you coming from where are you going where do you fit in the story okay because you know a lot of times it's like you book the part and then you're on set in two days you know what I mean yeah. so it's just like okay well, uh, you know but now my process from script to screen is I mean, my, my space that I have, my, my office space, I mean, I get poster boards and I just start um, from just marking every scene in the script, uh, even if I'm in it or not. I just mark it from A to Z and I just try to find like what the arc of the actual script is, what are some themes of the scripts, just like what do I feel like the writer or whoever is trying to what are they trying to say? And then I look at my character and I'm like, okay, well, what's her arc? You know, where does she start? Where does she end? Where does she crescendo? Where does she learn her lesson? Where does she feel like she has to make a change? And I just start like pinpointing those things. I, I literally make like a timeline and um, I just mark the kind of like the emotional beats in the timeline. And, uh, and then I just try to put it on. I mean, I, I do a lot of visualization, a lot of meditation. You know, I go kind of, holistically into myself like okay where has sierra felt anger where has sierra felt joy yeah uh you know ec ecstasy or pain or wherever like where have you found those and then i try to equate those to those moments and the emotions to i love that the character and then i love that i learn my lines <laughs> and this is for and this is for just very important what you just said i'm not gonna let that go away but this is for if you've already booked it yeah or is this for right if you already booked it so you know getting in how, how do you like this world of self-tapes that is going on right now you know i mean i i like it it's definitely um i mean it's fast paced there have been moments where i've been extremely overwhelmed by it because you know fast turnarounds mm -hmm of high volumes of material, but I'm also extremely grateful because, you know, it gives me an opportunity to be seen for more projects. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my, my process for auditioning, you know, it's kind of the same, but it's just like, you got to do it faster. It's truncated. Have, yeah. yeah. Like I don't have hours to really, you know, sometimes I just probably have an hour or 30 mm -hmm. minutes, you know, I'm mm -hmm. looking at, okay, this is due tomorrow morning. It's 8 PM. You know, what can I do? And yeah. so, um, so yeah, I truncate it, but a lot of times with auditions, I just, this may be so bad. And if any acting coaches or directors are hearing this, you know, please don't, don't put me on the stake, but, uh, <laughs> I just, 
I just, sometimes I just be Sierra. And yeah. I know it's like so counterintuitive, but sometimes I'm just like, I, I'm not, I, I see this character, but I'm just going to like go in and just be myself. Who is Sierra yeah. as a doctor? Who is, you know, Sierra as a taxi driver or a cop or, you know, whatever, like, who am I in those situations? All right, let's just, let's do it. Let's try to punch up, you know, the spaces where we need to do the arc and let's just rock and roll. So, you know, I don't think that that is, nobody's going to, uh, you know, put you on a stake on that because I think, you know, speaking about this and I, why I think this is so exciting for me when I talk about this with other actors is a lot of us actors don't know how to bring ourselves to roles. We don't know that we are that secret sauce, mm -hmm. right? That we are. And so the fact that you'd be like, a lot of that is just me. That's great because I can try to be you, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, right? Exactly. I could try to be you and you can try to be me, but we're not going to do it. And so why not just let you do you and do it well? So I think that's, that's, that's pretty great. But I, what I loved about what you said more than anything, I loved it all. <laughs> but you said at the end of all of that, then I learned my lines, right? Yeah. And I think a younger version of us or me or people who are listening to this, they want to go straight for the lines, right? But there's so much imagination play, so much other stuff. Why do you learn your lines last? Um, I mean, when I book the role, I don't know. It's just, I need to make sense of it. It's just, mm -hmm. it looks like a big jigsaw puzzle to me at first. And I, I can't, it's like, you know, back in the day when we used to print out the map quest, you know, direction. I didn't print those out because I'm very young. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I didn't either. My dad did. What are you talking about? I, I never, I never had a Thomas guide. I know. I, what is that? I've never heard of that. <laughs> what? <laughs> but when we used to. No, I, it's just, you, I, I don't know. I, I gotta, I can't just think about. I can't start at the destination, if that makes sense. I have to know when am I making a right turn? When am I, how many miles am I on this road? Or, mm. you know, that, I don't know. That's just like how it works for me. Now, I would say with auditions, again, when it's a quick turnaround and I have like three of those babies to do in one day or whatever, I'm like, all right. Like I said, sometimes I'm just like, just be Sierra in this. What are the lines? All right, let's get down to it. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, I've booked some that way and, you know, some I haven't. So, you yeah. know, it's just my process really with all of that is just ever evolving. And but I know for sure whenever I book um, whenever I book a role, it's always lines are kind of at the bottom of the list. I mm -hmm. got to get into the character and then and then I just feel like the lines come easily mm -hmm. for me. So I agree. I agree. So there's this other thing that I got to talk to you about, and I'm a little jealous. I'm just going to say it up front. I'm just going to say it up front and call it, call it in what it is. You met Maya Angelou? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> this is like a full stop moment for me. I'm like a degree away from separation now from, I mean, you know, it's just bad, but like I, like that is royalty in our, yes. in our, you know, in our world, I would say, but culture for sure. Like, and, and then what it led to, tell me about that meeting with Maya Angelou, because this is like, it was full circle for me. I mean, because I, I went to North Carolina school of the arts mm -hmm. and my freshman year of college, we had to do this thing where we just had to do like lip sync a song. And I did still I rise by Yolanda Adams. And it just like sparked this whole conversation about Maya Angelou and my teacher at the time, she was like, did you know that she lives, you know, like 10 minutes away from here? And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I had no idea. And, you know, I'd read so many of her books and she was just, I don't know, she just had such a huge mark on my life and upbringing. So I just was like, okay, she lives here in Winston-Salem. I'm going to meet her. I'm going to figure out a way mm -hmm. to meet her. And I just, I wrote her, I found email addresses to her assistants, like, because she was teaching at Wake Forest University as well. So I just was like, dear Dr. Angelo, da, 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 da. And I wouldn't get a response or I would get like an automated response or I'd get like, she's too busy. Who are you? Like, you know, like yeah. little girl, leave us alone. <laughs> 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 and then, like, they write back, stop playing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. 
exactly. I just was like, I just love you so much. I read, da, 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 da. I, read, I, I don't it. know why the cage bird sings a hundred times. Like just. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just was like, oh gosh, so embarrassing. And I'm so mm-hmm. glad I don't have that email account anymore because I was like, <laughs> those emails. Um, <laughs> but um, senior year of college, we do Gym of the Ocean by August Wilson. Um, all eight of the uh, we we had a uh, eight black students in the school of drama and we all did August Wilson. And it was like the first time that town had experienced something like of that magnitude, the play just like blew up the town of Winston Salem. Everybody was ranting and raving about it. And my school was trying to get Dr. Angelo to come see it, but I guess at the time she wasn't able to, and she had just extended an invitation to the chancellor of my university to, you know, just come to her house and, you know, invite students or whatever, you know. And so I was one of the students. It was uh, uh, me and one of my cast members. And it was interesting because, and I hope that my other cast members in the play don't get mad at me, but for some reason, I don't know what they were doing, but they weren't able to go. And when I look back at it, I'm like, I would have dropped everything I was doing. To- Clear your calendar moment. This is like a code red. <laughs> so Alan Tyson, shout out to Alan. He and I, we were the only students that went and we went to Dr. Angela's house and when I tell you I went there and it was who's who of like black education, HBCUs, everything. I mean, Michael Eric Dyson, his wife, um, Susan Taylor from uh, Ebony Magazine, just like all of these just amazing people. Yeah, I'm going to make this story as short as I can. But I just remember seeing Dr. Angelou sitting on the couch um, in like the living room area and I just was like, I froze because I was like, oh my gosh, there she is, you know? And so I just like went to the back of the house where everyone else was. Like everyone was just in the back of the house talking, eating and stuff. And my chancellor comes up to me and he goes, Sierra, Dr. Angelo is sitting all by herself in the living room. And I was like, oh, okay. And he's like, you need to, you need to go and talk to her. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay. And so I literally go into the living room and I'm like, I just like announced it. I'm just like, hi, Dr. Angelo. My name is Sierra Payton. I've been writing you for a while. I love all your books and I just, I adore you. And I just didn't know what to say. And she just looks at me and she goes, sit down. And I was like, okay. And I just sat down and we just talked. For, well, she talked and I just listened and just asked her so many questions. And, you wow. know, and, and anyway, by the end of the meeting, I, I said, you know, uh, I, I have been writing you. I know you teach at Wake Forest, Wake Forest University, and I, uh, I want to take your class. And she looks at me, she goes, I don't let just anyone take my class. And I was like, well, I want to take your class. And so she calls her assistant in and she's like, take, um, take Miss Peyton's information down and, you know, connect with her. We'll try to get her in my class. And about two weeks later, I got into her class at Wake Forest University, and I told my dean and everybody at my school, I was like, whatever it takes, I'm going to take this class. So if I have to do summer school or not graduate, I'm taking this class. Come on. You know, right. I was just like, whatever. It's my Angelou, y'all. Yeah. And they were just like, okay. <laughs> so, so yeah. yeah. I, uh, I took her class for a semester. And um, we just created a bond during that time. And Mother's Day of 2008, I had dinner at her house. And, you know, I was about to graduate from college. And she asked me what was I planning to do after college. And I was like, I just, I want to be an actor, you know. And so she called her assistant in the room. And she was like, I have somebody that you should meet. And I was like, okay. So her assistant dials a number. And she gets on the phone. And she's like, Tyler. My, my goddaughter, my not goddaughter. She actually called me granddaughter. She was like, "My granddaughter is here with me, and I think you should meet her." And I'm like, "Who is she talking? Like, Who are you talking? <laughs> Who I think she is?" Yes. And sure enough, she was talking to Tyler Perry, and Tyler Perry. you know, very very long story short, I flew down to Atlanta um, to just have a general meeting with his casting director, and. I ended up meeting him and Ruben Cannon and they were filming Medea Goes to Jail. And uh, it was the last day of filming and they needed some extras in a scene. And uh, they were like, do you wanna be in this? And I was like, heck yeah, sure. And so mm. I get rushed into a makeup trailer with- Oh, to be an extra then, right then? Yeah, 
right mm-hmm. then and there. And uh, wow. Viola Davis was sitting next to me in the makeup room. <laughs> and uh, Keisha Knight Pulliam was in there. And I was like, what is my life right now? This is insane. And so I just, uh, I was a featured extra on Medea Goes to Jail. And yeah, that was uh, an ad. That's how it started. <laughs> yeah, I think that was my second or third acting job. And mm. so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if if anyone believes in the acting gods out there, right? Like, come on, like Steven Seagal, and then to go with Tyler Perry, you know what I mean? And and it, that's just beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And we want to take away for how 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 hard you probably you know you worked. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't want to take away from that saying oh. that somebody came down and you know that doesn't that's not fair to you. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, but you know, it's there was a lot of hard work, but I do just you know, cause I, I, I often lead with that. I'm like, man, like y'all don't know how hard it was and the struggles and the things that mm-hmm. was going on. And, you know, and I'm consciously trying to make a, just a step forward. Just when I do tell my story to not focus on that so much, because at the end of the day, it was a really big blessing and, you know, however it came about, I don't know. I don't know if it matters too much. You know what I mean? I don't think it does. Yeah. Like it doesn't, you know, I, I feel like, um, I'm totally going off tangent here, but, but yeah, I, I feel like oftentimes, you know, when we do hear other people's stories and the success story, you know, we don't hear the other side of it, but we're mm-hmm. so eager to hear the other side of it. And yeah. I don't know if it, if it matters, if it makes that big of a difference, you know, I can talk about the moments of, you know, crying in the corner, having $200 to my name and, you know, struggle, struggle, struggle. I mean, you know, going through Hurricane Katrina and then booking the Steven Seagal movie, it's just, you know, those things are, uh, they're part of the journey, but, you know, I wouldn't say that my suffering and trauma or tragedy is why I got the roles. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There was a higher purpose and a higher power or reason or whatever, why I got those roles. But I don't know, you know, that I have to share the, the, the trauma story to be like, see, if you struggle too. <laughs> you know? Right. Like I have to have a bond with that. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, exactly. we're not here for that. We're not here for that. Like that is not true, but I'm like, I guess I'm thinking in terms of coming out the gate to work with Steven, some of the grades meet Maya Angelou, Tyler Perry. Like that is what I'm like, God, the acting gods were like, Hey, yeah. not like, Oh, this happened to you because you knew somebody or legacy or anything like that. That is not, we're like, oh, it's like when you come out the gate and you meet Oprah. Have you met yeah. Oprah? Because I don't know if we can have this conversation if you met her. I, I I didn't officially meet her, to be honest with you, but I did sit a couple feet away from her. So, you know, I'm going to- I've been in a room. Her. I've been in a room with her. I was like, what? That's Oprah over there. Okay. You know, so. I, I was in a room with her. I started crying. I started crying. I don't, I don't know. Like I was just in the room with her and it was like, I mean, she was like feet away from me. And then all of a sudden she's the only person that I've ever had that reaction to, you know what I mean? So I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's the magnitude of her is definitely like, whoa, you know, it's really great. So Tyler Perry, I, you know, you, 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 you're on the oval right now, but you also did Medea's funeral, right. As well. Medea's funeral, Medea goes to jail. You said that, that part, um, uh, but you're also on the Oval playing Lily. I I got to know, and I'm just going to, you know, just everybody pull up a chair because I got to know this stuff. But like, what's it really like working with Tyler Perry? Because what I hear as an actor, I hear that, and I don't know if these are like old, what do you call them? Not wives tales or like super, I don't know whatever they are. Uh-huh. But like, all I hear is he has a person who helps you l- learn your lines. He's like very <laughs> generous and has like, he moves really, fast and so you do two things like it's like all this stuff that you need to know and i'm like what is he doing down there like you know what i mean i'm so excited he has he has he has a um a camp or like you can stay like you know what i mean all these things that are so fantastic i'm like i want to go where some play everybody helps me learn my lines is this even true or are we hearing this through the grapevine okay so the the learning lines part um isn't it's okay there's not like one person that's like assigned to you yeah, I mean, there's there's scripty. We have scripty on set. Yeah, of course. And everybody, mm-hmm. you know, every production has scripty. But you know, I don't know if you ever done any soap opera work, mm-hmm. but I feel like it is pretty standard in terms of you know, there's 
a handful of people or there's a person that is available to help you run lines if you need to, Mm -hmm. you know? And so that's kind of what, I don't know what everyone else's uh, experience (laughs) has been like, but you know, I know when I get there, uh, we do have, you know, a handful of people that, you know, we try to like, you know, set time with to, you know, try to learn our lines. Um, And then for the most part, you know, the actors, we just rehearse with each other, you know? Yeah. Um, but working with with Tyler, I mean, it's just it's awesome. I mean, every time I just get a chance to be around him and work with him, I'm just I'm in awe of you mm-hmm. know what he's accomplished and what he's done. I mean, I mean, we've all heard his story, and you know, in terms of you know being homeless and writing the plays to you know like begging people to come see his stuff to now you know being running a billion dollar business. I mean, it's incredible you know and he's just honestly I mean when I've been around him and worked with him I mean he's just I don't know how to say it I mean he's like normal person you know yeah. it's just like yeah. hi how you doing you know like it's nothing I don't know it's I mean obviously when I first 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 started working with him and even when I did Medea Goes to Jail I mean I was intimidated and you know, just like, oh my gosh, like, like this is, you know, Tyler Perry. And then when I did Medea's family funeral, um, you know, initially I had all those feelings, but Mm -hmm. he just made us feel so comfortable and so welcomed. And, you know, it just, it made it fun. And plus it was a Medea movie. So, you know, it's just like, you know, we're laughing, cracking jokes and everything, but I mean, yeah. And, and yes, I mean, it's fast paced, but it is, you know, I feel like that's kind of standard to soap opera as well. You know, yeah. it's just, you've got a lot of pages and you shoot fast and I mean, and, and that's that. So, so yeah. yeah, that's, you know, I, I am in awe of Tyler Perry, you know, whatever anybody thinks about anybody's work, whether it's Aaron Sorkin or, you know, whatever everybody thinks about it, Like Ty, I'm just in awe of what he has created, yeah. right. What he has created down there with those studios and the lots. And like, when I look at this black man, what he's doing, I am in awe of that. And, you know, I haven't had a chance to work with him yet. We've been circling Tyler. If you listen to this, I've <laughs> auditioned a couple of times for it. You know? well, let me tell you, I auditioned for him for almost 10 years. Oh, wow. Until I booked Medea's Family Funeral. So I did the Medea Goes to Jail as an extra, mm-hmm. which was, you know, amazing. And that was 2008. And was it 2007? 2007, 2008. And I auditioned for probably every show, every movie between 2008 up until 2017. Mm-hmm. And then finally, I booked Medea. Medea's family funeral in 2017. Yeah. And then two years later, I do uh, the Oval. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I booked the Oval. I was going to say, you're not, you didn't do, you're doing, you're still doing it, right? Yeah, Yeah, it's great, great. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it's just, I just say all that. It's like, man, if you keep getting called in, and this is true, I mean, we hear this all the time. It's like, if the casting director keeps calling you in, they like you, something's going to pop, you know? And so it took, nine ten years for me. no it's good I, kim coleman keeps calling me in for it so i'm i am i am very 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 you know it's it's a little interesting right and i, I don't know if if you care to speak about this i'm just wondering as i'm talking to another person of color that you know there sometimes seems to be like a black hollywood and a non-black hollywood will call like and i you know as we look at things and I, I I I did seven years on an Amazon show and, you know, and I was like, okay, people know who I am. And like, and I could not get into Kim's office for the longest time. And, you know, my manager had said one time, he's like, did you, did you and Kim have a moment? Like, or something? I was like, no, I don't know, know what's going on. So I don't know. Have you, have you, have you seen that you've done some things that might be considered and this does not have to be your story. So please don't take it on, but you know, black Hollywood or non-black Hollywood, like, or do you have, is that even in your world? Have you even heard anything like that? Before? Oh yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, hey. Uh, hey, yeah. Hey, it, it's look. Uh, I don't even know what to say on that, but very right, exactly right. <laughs> I mean, look. I mean, work is work. I agree. And, um, agree. Agree. And yeah, I mean, there. I mean, there's been casting offices that I have been trying to like bust down the door. Yeah. 
to get into, you know, or just projects that I'm like, dang, I didn't get to audition for that. You know what I mean? And it's just yeah. like, um, I don't know. It's just, it's, there's no rhyme or reason to any of it. It, it really I mean? isn't. And I just remember, you know, when Medea's Family Funeral came out and we were like on a big billboard and my manager was like just trying to get me in you know, it came out during pilot season and he was just trying to get me into things. And like casting directors were like, we don't know her. She's not a name. She's, and he's like, she's literally on a billboard right now. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. what? and then even um, after Wendy Williams movie came out, same thing. Now I'm on my own billboard all by myself, you know, and uh, playing the lead of this like lifetime movie and stuff. And my manager was like banging on the door for some people to be like, yeah look like, look and they're like no she's not we mm, you know and so yeah. it's just I don't know you just take it in stride and you just you know you you just know that you got some fans out there and the people that are going to call you in or you know they're rooting for you and the people that um you know do eventually call you in and they're just curious about what you can do and I mean you can't it you can't make people have vision and you know, I just think that what's meant for me is meant for me. What's meant for you is what's meant for you. And I mean, there's been some doors that I didn't even know of and they just opened, you know? Yeah. So it's just yeah. like, regardless of if it's black Hollywood or, you know, if you're black famous, white famous or in between, like, you know, it's just, you can. It's, yeah. It, it's, yeah. Just, it's the nature of, of the game. It's the nature of the beast. And it's, you know, I just work is work. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy to be, where you know I'm welcomed and celebrated. Yeah, you know? I, I have to say we talked a little bit about um, you know your struggle, right, and sharing that struggle and how it's not important. I don't know that the struggle of like oh you know because I don't believe in perpetuating a struggle, mm -hmm. right, and you know and saying oh I had to eat or I had two hundred bucks or something like that. I don't know that we have to like go there, but I love hearing the struggle, not the struggle, but the inside of your business stuff, right? Because I think what actors, what I'm always trying to demystify is you are okay. You are on the right path just because you came off of a show and didn't jump immediately back on another show. You are okay if you can't get in one door, but all these other doors, because so long we look at that locked door or that closed door when there's 17 other open doors that we are ignoring. And I love that you say work is work. So for me, I'm always trying to get to that piece where like actors, that old thing we were saying before or listening to the actors past who had deals with studios or things like that oh, yeah. that's not out there anymore what is out there is the story you just told you know what i mean of how i was literally wendy williams <laughs> big no but that's a big deal i saw it right i you know i was watching it even before this moment so i was like please come on the podcast yeah. because you know it, it was it was it, it's huge and you know i, I just want to say you know as we you know if i can segue into that Congratulations. That was an amazing, amazing, you know, job done. I, I don't even know <laughs> what to say, but I, I'll say this. Here's what I'll say. I think what you and I share is we've played real life people, right? And so I felt, and I don't know what you felt before we even jump in like the casting and all that stuff of Wendy Williams. I felt a huge, like, different responsibility by playing somebody who was still alive yeah. that I was like, they're going to see this. And my guy didn't want to talk to me. Oh, really? Right. So I kind of just had to watch a lot of the footage from the, the reality shows and stuff like that. But did you have, did you feel that, you know, playing this real life person, one, was there any pressure or, or, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. And it's just like, I feel like if it were anyone else, you know, if it were Kamala Harris or somebody or I don't know, like I said, Pam Greer, Lena mm -hmm. Horne, whatever, I would feel some pressure. I think that's normal as an actor. But when it's someone who is so involved, like is a daily conversation every single day on social media and has a, a massive following mm -hmm. where people know her mannerisms people know you know they track her stories and the things she talks about and she's in memes and and gifs and uh she's you know every day somebody's making a youtube video about her you know so 
for me, I felt more of the pressure, not from Wendy, but from the fan base. Cause yeah. I, and this whole notion, cause social media, we're in this age now where it's, you know, we're as actors, I mean, our work is put out there and dissected and objectified and subjectified, you know, in all kinds of many ways. And so, you know, I had to really just kind of just put that in the background at first it was very intimidating in terms of like don't mess this up sierra because twitter's gonna get you you know <laughs> or instagram's gonna they're gonna say they're gonna talk bad about you or she you meant know. to say black twitter you guys oh, yeah. oh, yes, yes 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 but 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 wendy got a whole bunch of twitter you know yeah yeah she does she does yeah yeah, yeah. how are you doing it's everywhere <laughs> like it's like everybody knows everybody yeah. you know yeah. so um, that that's what I felt going into it. Of like, okay. whew, all right, let me not disappoint the fans, you know, because they're gonna they're gonna come for me. But I when I was approaching it, I just I was like, you know what, I gotta I gotta take it away. I gotta take this Wendy away, like Wendy Williams away. Mm. And I mean, mm. for a while, I literally was watching her show every day and keeping it on loop, you know, for hours and hours and. And I was like, okay, this is good and all, but who is this woman? Like in my mind, who is this woman that who's behind the camera? When the lights, when the camera's off. Yeah, when the lights mm-hmm. are off. Lights she's are at home, mm-hmm. She's chilling. She's relaxing. She's dealing with this whole whirlwind of things. Who is this woman? And who would I be as this woman? You know. And so that's just kind of when I started to really just sink into that it just took away a lot of that anxiety. And then when I spoke to Wendy, cause we had two just like four or five hour conversations and it just put me at ease because yeah. I just, I started to be like, okay, like I'm going to tell this woman's story and yeah. I'm just going to tell her story and just honor her story. Yeah. And yeah. I could relate to some things. Yeah. I relate to that moment. I relate to that. Okay. I'm going to tell, okay, now I got to get her mannerisms down. Okay, cool. You know, it was just like, it was just that, you know, and I just, I believe the only scene that I kind of stressed the most out was the, when she was in the Statue of Liberty costume mm-hmm. and she fainted. Yeah. Because that yeah. thing was like, you know, it was everywhere like a social media thing, but I just was like, well, there's footage of it actually happening. Like, let me just do what I see. Like, let me just try to mimic it as best as I can, you know? Mm-hmm. And so um, I, that was the one I think I rehearsed so many times because I was just like it just wouldn't make any sense for me to you know half do this scene when there's actual footage of it out there. yeah it's not like you can do like Janet Jackson Super Bowl and then like make it up your own right you gotta like yeah, there's exactly. a there's footage that everybody's yeah. in <laughs> you, gotta <do> the, exactly. <laughs> you gotta do the Super Bowl I understand that one um I I, I I I again I think it was fantastic I remember watching it I think it was 2020 2021 I just remember it was in the pandemic sometime during the yeah. pandemic that it was on and I just thought like wow I didn't know this much about um her you know what I mean and this is gonna sound like a backhanded compliment but it, it's really complimented you didn't take me out of it does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Does that make like it was I wasn't like, oh, what is happening? It was like, cool. I just fell into the story. Yeah. Right. You know, and that's the good thing about it. You're like, you just fall into the story. You're not like, oh, this person doesn't really seem like they're not Wendy. You seem like Wendy. You didn't yeah. take it at no point. So that is a compliment. I so big. <laughs> No, it's totally a compliment. Thank you. Yeah. Um, how was the casting process for that? I mean, that's kind of... That was crazy, too. I mean, oh. you know, talk about uh, God, the acting gods, everything. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, I just, I think when you're just in the flow of things and you're just really honoring your light and staying in joy and like not stressing and worrying about things, regardless of how many things you got to stress and worry mm-hmm. about... I just, I feel like life just opens up for you, you know? And so I was just minding my business and people on Twitter and Instagram started being like, Wendy, we found the girl to play you. And I was like, what is going on? (laughs) I was just like, what's going on? You know? And I guess Wendy had announced on her show, I'm I'm guessing because I haven't found any episodes or anything, but Mm -hmm. she had announced that she was going to be doing her biopic and casting soon and 
you know, so I guess it became a thing where her fans were like, we need to help her cast her movie or something. Well, you know, that's how she does it. She would like cast people's like next things. Yeah. Like, oh, this is who you have to have in a real house. You know what I mean? So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, just there were maybe like 10, maybe 15 tweets and Instagram things. And they were like adding Wendy Williams, like, Wendy, we found a girl to play you or CR, you should play Wendy Williams. And I was like, what is going on? And I don't know. I just took it as a clue. I was like, okay, well, let me start watching Wendy Williams. And this was around September, October of 2019, I want to say. Okay. And so I just was like, let me, let me watch Wendy Williams. I used to watch her show all the time. And, uh, and I was like, let me just watch her. And so I just started watching and started being like, okay, all right, let me, how does this feel? You know? And I just, you know, just started, I don't know, just taking it in. And then January of 2020, um, my manager emails me the appointment for Wendy Williams, the movie. And uh, I was with Leah Daniels and I was like, huh, okay, this is all right go for it you know and there's a young lady uh that lives near me who um she was in college at the time her name's uh, mary christina she goes by stina she's a singer shout out to stina mm -hmm. um she was helping me run my lines at the time and so i'd have her come over and like you know pay her you know a couple bucks an hour or whatever and uh we just we worked on the lines for this audition and i got in full character and i actually recorded myself and just watched it back, played it back. You know, did I get her mannerisms right? Did I, you know? So then the audition, I, our day, day comes and I go in and I audition. Oh, because we were still auditioning in the room in 2020 of January by this time. Great, 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 great. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so I go and I mean, there's tons of girls in the waiting room. And I just was like, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, I was just like, come on, Sierra, like. Yeah. Just go in, just do what you practice, you know? And so I did. And, and then she let me do it again. And then the second time I just was improv and acting like Wendy as if I was on Wendy doing the show. And, you know, we just had a lot of fun. And, um, and then a couple weeks later, I had a call back. And mm. so called up Mary Christina, I was like, look, got a call back. Got a Christina, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do this, girl. You know, we we're like in my kitchen. She got the video camera going. And I'm like, you know, how you doing? Like, just mm -hmm. everything, you know? Yeah. And so uh, then I go back to the callback. And that's with the producer, Sheila Ducksworth. And, you know, you just, you don't know. So, like, you know, it's just, I love casting directors and producers and directors when they give you that poker face. and Because you're just like, what? Are you yeah. Like, yeah. Does it work? Does it not? You know, like, yeah. all right, cool. Thank you. You know, have a great day. You too. Bye. You know? And so um, then I find out that we are uh, going back to the Oval. And so I was like, all right, cool. You know, so I'm getting ready to go back to the Oval first, second week of March. And uh, that we were going to go back second week of March. And I would say mid-February, February 22nd ish, I found out that I get the movie, that they really oh. want to book me. And they're shooting the second week of March. Oh. <laughs> I was like, all right. You know, well, lots of calling back and forth, figuring it out. She can't do it. You know? Can't do what? I, I couldn't, I couldn't do the movie. No. Yeah. So, um, I mean, wait, I'm, I'm so invested, y'all. I'm like, no, but I know how it turns out. You get the movie. Yes, so I know, I know. The adventure, the adventure oh of it all. I'm so dramatic. Go ahead. Tell me all of it. I'm dramatic too. You know, you're like rapid fire questions. I'm like, oh no, I'm not going to give you the whole backstory. No, but, um, <laughs> I'm in it. I'm in it. But yeah. So, you know, it, it was just like, it was crazy. It was insane. And then there was all kinds of stuff going on behind the scenes where I'm like, Lord Jesus, like, you know, I'm, I'm tired of getting the things that make me stronger, you know, <laughs> like, mm. can I not, you know, mm -hmm. uh, can we just make it easy? So um, anyway, I just was like, all right, I got to, you know, let go of the Wendy Williams movie. We're going to go do the Oval. Like, cool. You know, like I'm in a really blessed position. Like, thank you, God. You know, I got a job to go to and I got to let go of this job. You yeah. know? Not a lot of people can say that. And then the pandemic hits and mm. both productions have to shut down. And so I was like. Oh, that's interesting. Now I don't have a job at all. You know, and so I was just like, wow. all right, you know, so months go by and uh, July, I get a call 
from my manager saying, hey, Lifetime is thinking about, you know, trying to do the production and they're still interested in you. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Then I get another call. Hey, looks like uh, you're going to go back to the Oval. Okay, cool. What are the dates? Same dates. <laughs> so I was like, well, what do we do? You know? Yeah. So it just ended up at the end of the day, it ended up working out because we wrapped the Oval um, at like towards the middle part of August, I want to say. And then Lifetime was starting up at the beginning of, of September. So it just literally all worked out. Wow. I finished the Oval. I had a couple of days back home and then I was on a plane to go to Canada to shoot Wendy the movie. And so the whole casting process started from some people tweeting me to wow. be a Mary Christina and, you know, COVID pandemic uh, schedule conflicts to eventually booking it. So, but you know, I guess I want to, but real quick, before we just say that people just tweeted you, it sounds like you have put yourself out there so they could find you or you have done stuff before, or how did the, the people who were tweeting at you, like, do you, you, like, how do they know who you like? I know, right. Uh, I mean, I think, I mean, the oval was on at the time. So okay. Okay. I feel like that was a thing. And yeah, like I'm active on social media, probably not as okay. much as I should be, but you know, I, yeah. I'm on there. I, I okay. retweet a lot and I like tweets. And so, you know, so you're not on there. <laughs> Look, I'm going to tell you this about social media. Uh, I, I am like, whenever I tweet anything, I am so like, is this going to cancel yes. or say or offend anybody yes. any kind of way? Like, I just want to be so careful, you know? And so any little joke or whatever, I'm like, okay, I got to look at this joke a hundred ways right now. Let's just not post it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you get exhausted. Like, You're yeah, exhausted. Yeah. By that. I'm a very political guy in my home. <laughs> right. And then sometimes I'll pull it out and I'll be like, get ready. And then I'm like, nope, we, let's just, we just, I'm glad I formed that tweet, but yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to get to this next part because, you know, I, I, I coach actors, I work with them and, um, one of my clients, uh, a couple of days ago, I was on a call with her and we had worked out, uh, a, a plan for her to write. She's going to, she wants to be a showrunner and she wants to be a writer. And we, we start working in that direction and she was writing. We had a full plan. And I said to her at the end of the plan, I was like, what do you think of this plan? And she was like, well, and I was like, well, doesn't sound like you're committed to this plan. What's up? And she says, well, I know we're looking for an agent and I don't want that agent to think I'm not a serious actor because I'm doing other things. Mm -hmm. And what I said to her is like, that is an old expired belief that the cult of average is making you believe that you can't do other things outside of just being an actor. That is actor past. Some actors, some, somebody told you, if you want to be an actor, that's the only thing you can do. We yeah. can be different. And when I started doing some research on you, I saw that you are a brand, my sister, like a brand. And so as I know, you're like, where's he going with this? Is he trying to like sell me on this person? No, 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 like, no. do you want to work with me, Sierra? No, it's not that. But I just really started thinking about these different things about the brand of Sierra, the actor, the entrepreneur, lifestyle, wellness advocate. I, 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 I mean, I, I mean, the, the in Thrive. I mean, yeah. you know what I'm talking about? There's so Michael's yeah. daughter. Like, yeah. come on, we can start like going. And I was like, and I thought about that. Let me tell you, I mean, like exactly what you said. We, we, there's so many falsehoods that us as actors and creatives in general have mm -hmm. just played into for so many years. And it's so bizarre. And I don't know who started any of this or, you know, I don't know if it was actors ourselves being like, I got to only be this one thing or I got to only be a serious actor. I got to be this or whatever. And, you know, my thing is like, just leave all that behind. And and I used to be that way too. It took oh, so were you, I was really talking about her, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I, I used to, um, I mean, I, I just feel like when I first started out, I just was like, people used to be like, oh, would you ever be interested in directing or, you know, writing or whatever? And I'd be like, no, mm -mm, I mean, I'm an actor. Actor. <laughs> no, 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 no. I no, you know, but over the years and, and even as I had started the Michael's Daughter Foundation and um, teaching and- Beautiful, by the way. The Michael's Daughter, if everybody- why you started the foundation and what you do in that foundation, like, is just gorgeous. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt no, that, but it's no, 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 thank 
Thank you. Really I good stuff there. That. And yeah. you know, it's it's been a it's definitely been a labor of love and I'm excited about it and you know, we're we've got some really great funding for this year and so I'm super excited for what is to come with that and you know, definitely will keep people posted on it, but um but yeah, I mean even just you know, when you watch when I started watching other actors and people that I look up to and even just like uh, just entertainers, you know, they weren't just sitting at home only doing one thing. I remember when I was in my freshman year of college and I went to North Carolina School of the Arts, which is now the University of North Carolina School, School of the Arts and all the conservatories, you know, they're they're we're a theater school and you have to, you know, this. And um, and I wouldn't say my school was so pretentious or anything like that. But I mean, you kind of said it that way, the way you said theater. They are, but <laughs> but I love them. Hi, hi, NCSA, UNCSA. What's up? I love y'all. But I remember my first one of our first classes. We had to say who our favorite actors were, and everybody was going around a circle. Lawrence Olivier, Meryl Streep, and they got to me, and I said Jennifer Lopez and Holly Berry. And mm. they laughed at me. My classmates, mm. and the teacher was just like, explain. And I just was like, first of all, these two women, you know, they've broken so many barriers and you can't deny their, you know, just their raw talent and what they do. But second of all, they have built these brands and done so many things outside of, you know, being actors and you know particularly Jennifer Lopez at the time I mean the perfume the entertaining the the movies the you know the makeup the clothing brand like everything and I just I thought that was fascinating I was like man I want to do something like that one day but I always was very adamant about whatever I build outside of being an actor uh it just has to come with intention and it has to come from you know the bases of you know, tapping into my joy, sharing my light, you know, helping other people find their light and stuff. And so, so yeah, I mean, I built the, the in tribe, which is, uh, it stands for the inspired thriving tribe. It's a lifestyle wellness brand. Um, but it's also, you know, expanding, I'm going to start doing courses really soon on it and, you know, doing monthly and, um, quarterly meetups, you know, with other creatives and, you know, it's just all about, teaching and working with people on, you know, how to be intentional in their craft and, mm-hmm. and just be intentional in their everyday lives. And yeah. so, yeah, you know, and, and with the Michael Storer Foundation, I was a teaching artist for a really long time. I, I still am. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just me kind of marrying my work as an actor and a teaching artist. And also, you know, my experience and background of having a father incarcerated and being like, hey, I'm not the only person in America that experienced this. Let's just put all these things together and work with young people who have uh, similar backgrounds and have them create work. And so, you know, I just, for any actor out there or somebody who's afraid to branch out and, you know, do something simultaneously or, you know, do a byline of something else other than auditioning every day and looking for the next role, like, go for it, you know, like, don't, Mm -hmm. don't limit your mindset. And and it's, it's just, it's just not, it's not the way to be. I mean, if you look at some of the bigger actors now, like Reese Witherspoon, or even Zoe Saldana, you know, so many of them, they have wine businesses. Yes. You know, restaurants, (laughs) real estate, they do, you know, and, and nobody, and I know that they're, yes, we can say, oh, they're a name, they're more established or whatever. But if they were, you know, an average Joe, and we've seen them, you know, on an episode a week on something or, you know, an episode here or there of something, and they were doing real estate and selling wine or whatever. I don't think we would think any less of them, Yeah. you know? And so many of the actors that I've met or just creatives in general who have those multi different things, I'm always so fascinated by them. And I'm like, please tell me more. Like I know a hairstylist who he does hair, but he's teaching and he's, doing PR and he's doing like all these different things. And I'm like, teach me. I want to know how to do that. Like, I want to know how to do multiple different things. And so anyway, I talked way too long on that, but um, I loved it. I'm going to drive it home. So yeah. I loved every moment of it. And I I was, when I was on suits, I met that one of the series regulars on there, I guest starred on there. And this guy was in between takes. He was the only guy that was on his phone at that time in between takes. And I was like, what are you doing? I was like, you know, and he was like, I have a script that I am pitching that. And I was like, what? 
Like you're not just an actor, you're out here. And it's just these things that I think we, we need to in these spaces, like you're doing with all these things that I'm going to make sure that I link at the bottom of this uh, podcast, because I, I, I thought, you know, being the CEO of Michael Sarter and the lifestyle brand, I was like, okay, all right. I don't need that bag. I don't, need... <laughs> but it was really, 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 really great. I, I, before I let you go, Sierra, because I would be remiss if I didn't being, being the think bigger coaching the think bigger tribe the think bigger podcast you know we were really intentional about wellness and you know um i, I know you meditate is that right you meditate you have a morning routine yeah and stuff and i do transcendental meditation and yeah you know speaking of have you done oprah and deepox have you know I okay okay i have to do it I mean, it's they like saved in my little YouTube watch later and I just like haven't watched it later, <laughs> but I've watched so much of their stuff like separately. So yeah, I have to do it. It's so good to just go on one. I, that's how I started actually. Well, I started before that I got trained and then I went to that thing, but I just want to hear your like philosophy. Cause you said a lot throughout this podcast, joy, I picked up on, you said a lot throughout this podcast, intentional making sure that you are intentional about things. And so it sounds like you have a self-care routine that you make sure that you are bringing to your craft, to your businesses as an entrepreneur. And I just think it'd be a great place to kind of just let us land this podcast in, if you don't mind sharing. Yeah, I mean, I think, well, what I know for sure, you know, you asked me, why did I go into acting? I know that when I was younger, I really wanted to feel seen mm. and I wanted to make people feel better. Mm -hmm. And so when I act, and especially over the years as I've started to work more and, you know, people are, are receptive to my work and hearing how they are receptive to it and how they feel seen in what I do, I've just been like, that is... I don't know. That's just, a, that's the slice of life right there. If, if I can make someone feel seen through my storytelling or by smiling at them as I'm passing them by in the hallway or whatever, I just feel like that that's a, the, the slice of life. And whenever people have done that to me in my lowest moments, or, you know, when I'm not feeling seen, when I'm not feeling heard, it just lifts me up. It takes me out of the, the darkness, you know? And so I just, what I've been tuning into with my life and my artistry and my craft and all the many things that I've, you know, I'm working on building. Uh, it's just setting that intention to, mm -hmm. you know, shine my light, be a light for others and really just as best as I can retain my joy. And, you know, it starts with the meditating in the morning, pre paving the way, like, look, there's going to probably be some fires going on. You know, I might, you know. Mercury know, trying to get us. Yeah, you know, and it's just like, as best as I can, let me just, let me start the day off and just quiet mm -hmm. and just, you know, take a moment to just thank God, you know, and, and thank God that I'm still alive and that I woke up this morning and like find just one little thing that I can be just like, hee hee, you know, like, yay, you know, yay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. That bill got paid. Yay. You know, and it's yes. just, just that. And so, you know, for actors and creatives and just everyone out there, you know, I just think that as best as you can try to prepave the way, try to find ways to, you know, be intentional about what you're doing and why you're doing it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and try to practice that as best as you can, you know, whenever I work, I mean, I I always make friends with the PAs and you know the 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 custodians and stuff. I, I just I don't know like and I caterers the caterers everybody, everybody. like it's yes just, everybody. Hey, how you doing? What? Mm -hmm. How can I make your job easier? Yes. How can I yes. serve you? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. I'm in the way right now. Got it. Okay. You know, it's just mm -hmm. like. But yeah, so that that's been my process. That's been my my holistic wellness you know, practice, you know, every day as best mm -hmm. as I can. I'm not perfect at it. I'm not going to sit up here and lie to you and be like, every day I'm like that, you know, like I got moments where I'm like, I don't feel like meditating. I don't, I don't feel like doing this, but it's just like, I kick myself in the butt and I say, go ahead, Sierra, just do it. You know, yeah. just do it, get up and do it. You know, try to just go through the day, shine a little light wherever you can, or, 
you know, take someone, let, allow someone else to shine their light on you whenever you can, you know, so. I love that. And I want to just say to everybody, like, I think, you know, as a med- fellow meditator, um, as a guy who gets up and does yoga at five in the morning, I don't do yoga every day at five in the morning, right? Like, I don't, like, you're seeing snippets of that. But the goal, I think, is to carry that peace with you as much as possible and give yourself grace when you fall off that is the big thing it's not to i gotta do it this way because that breeds like you acting out i think sometimes or you know if we come back and you're like that bill was paid won't he do it and like (laughs) so yeah I hope you'll come back because I know there's 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 so much like big stuff coming for you. I feel it. I know it. Billboards. I'm gonna be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right, that's right. And we're we're gonna be working together because Tyler's gonna hear this and he's gonna be on like you know <laughs> all that. Heard that, Mister Mister P. Come on, you heard it. <laughs> come on, come on. Tim <laughs> Tim Coleman. Hello? You know, what's up? What's up? Thank you so much for coming on the Think Bigger Actors podcast. I have enjoyed every single moment of this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm I'm just thrilled to be here. Thank you. Mm, mm, mm. I love this entire episode from meeting Maya Angelou, which I am still very jealous about, <laughs> to how she got to work and is still working with Tyler Perry. Ah. One of the things that stood out to, you know, the most to me was the Superfans campaign to get her the Wendy Williams role. I know it stood out for you, too. It just, it just got my wheels turning because so often I work with actors that are against social media because they don't feel it's authentic, because they don't, wanna, they don't know what to post, because they just want to act and not have to do any of this kind of publicity. But when will we stop locking ourselves in the minds of the actor's past? That's this entire season, this first leg of the season. I'm breaking that mold. We don't have to have the same consciousness of the actors in the past. Let me tell you something. You cannot be a secret and be a success. I'll say it again for those in the cheap seats. You cannot be a secret and be a success. All this playing small that we out here doing because we don't want Ray Ray to say anything about us because we posted something? No, that has to stop. If you could be a secret to be a success, if that were the case, all of the amazing actors who are still hiding in their acting classes rather than putting themselves out there would be Oscar winners by now. I told you I was coming hot this season, the entire season. And if you have been listening to the Think Bigger Actors podcast since season one, you know I credit getting upped on Bosch to all of the posting I was doing on Twitter, social media, interacting with the fans and saying F you to that little voice that was telling me you shouldn't post about the show. You're only a co-star in the beginning. Who do you think you are posting? What if someone laughs at you? What if other actors see you and laugh? That's really what it comes down to. We care so much about the opinions of our fellow actors, so much so that we get paralyzed from doing the things that we know in our heart could benefit our career. But if they aren't feeling you, you know what I mean? That's okay. You know what I say about those three F's. If they aren't effing you, financing you, <laughs> or feeding you. Their opinions don't count. You know who's due? The decision makers on the other end. I know you're probably thinking, but Sierra was already working and so were you, Dewan. But the mindset shift here has to start somewhere. Why not do it before you get there? Act as if you are already a success. Let me say that again. Act as if you are already the success, the prize. Stop waiting for it to happen because it already has You just have to step into it. You just have to be bold to step into it and step boldly. (sighs) Y'all, the decision makers on the other end of that get to think, oh, these people really want to be a part of my, my show. Stop worrying about the people in the cheap seats. Stop worrying about the people in the cheap seats. That's it for me on this episode of the Think Bigger Actors podcast. If you enjoyed this episode and the D12 shot, 
I hope you'll consider following me on Instagram and TikTok at Think Bigger Coaching. And if you want to work with me or the Think Bigger team, check us out with all the show links that I put below this episode or go to thinkbiggercoaching.com. Maybe you don't want to check out the links. But hopefully you'll join me, join the club, the membership where you can get direct coaching from me or the team. And I just want to make sure you know this. Remember, don't quit. Don't get out of line. Borrow my faith in you. I am rooting so hard for you.